Yo, what's going on? This is episode 8 and probably the last episode of my tutorial client series. I might make more videos that explain stuff, but this is probably the end of the series. Just to, just want to say that the code for the client is now available in my Discord server. Just join and download, and then you can leave or just stay and ask questions. I have a programming help channel. So yeah, just want to get that out of the way. Now, I think I've done a pretty good job in this series. I've covered a lot more than all the other tutorials, and I think my videos have been a lot better structured as well. But there is a lot that I have not covered. So, mappings, how to compile faster shaders, fit safety, JVMTI, and more advanced stuff. I just haven't done that, so I just want to get it all done in one video. Let's do this. So, for mappings, everything above 1.14 is uh, released by Mojang and you can just find it in the client.json file. So for 1.14, just uh, go into .minecraft versions 1.14.4.json, search the file, and there's gonna be a link uh, that ends with client.txt. Just open that up in your browser, and it's gonna have all the mappings. Next, uh, a mapper, which I recommend everyone try making, is uh, like a piece of abstraction or a library that just gets one type of mapping and tries all the possible mappings. So in this example, I'm taking in the MCP name and what this mapper is going to do, it's going to try the vanilla name, it's going to try the SRG name and any other name that is equivalent to the MCP one, which, uh, and then yeah, just gets to the end, it tries everything, does find class on it. And if it gets a result, it returns it. So yeah. Um, this is my implementation, which I think is a lot better than the, all the other ones I've seen. So if you guys are interested, let me know. And I, I don't mind releasing it. I might do that. Uh, yeah, so I have map class, map method, and uh, map field. It just takes in like the class, the field, and the type. Uh, yeah, pretty much. And I, I can do like MCP names and vanilla names just in combination. So it's very easy to take existing code and just rewrite it. You don't have to actually change any of the strings. It just works out of the box. Um, yeah, so for faster compilation, uh, I recommend giving make file a try. You already have it installed if you installed MinGW. So you don't need to set anything up. It's just already there. Um, so how make file works is it uh, makes these .o files, which are intermediary, and you get them by doing minus C for specifying the code file. And there's just no point in recompiling things like the minhook library, so just compile them once to the .o files, and then the linker will use them. So that just means less comp compilation every time. And then you can also do multi-thread compilation of the minus g flag. So this can really get the compilation time down by a lot. So for OpenGL and shaders, there are some really good videos by OGL Dev on OpenGL and some good videos by Ace Rolla just on computer graphics in general. So if you are interested in this, I just recommend checking these two channels out. There's no point in me repeating this because most of my knowledge comes from these channels. So like, why should I just repackage everything when this is like the original source, this is where I got everything from. Just check these guys out, they're really good. They explain stuff pretty well. So yeah, like uh, shaders and any advanced OpenGL, that's all going to be on OGL Dev's channel. Uh, it's a lot better than Chernel and all everyone else. This guy actually knows what he's talking about. Now, uh, threat safety. A lot of clients randomly crash after like 10, 20, 40 minutes. And it's actually very easy to avoid. It's most likely just a threat safety issue. So, uh, threat safety, uh, has a crash when there's two threads writing or writing and reading to some data at the same time, which can corrupt the data and cause a crash. So in this example, there's some vector of global variables. It's a global variable. It's a vector of some things. Swap buffers is reading from that vector. The main thread modifies the vector. Boom, you crash. This is fixed by just adding a mutex or not using global variables. Yeah, just don't use global variables. Mutexes are slow. But yeah, um, have a global variable mutex, probably a global variable that 
uh, might cause a crash. So before accessing this global variable, mutex lock, then swap buffers iterates through it. The main thread can't modify it because the mutex is locked. When swap buffers is done, it calls unlock and then the main thread can modify it. So only one thread accesses the global variable at a time, which fixes the possibility of it crashing. There is, however, a different way for us to crash, and that is with GNI, because the Java program uh, has its own threads, the Java threads, and we can't really share a mutex between the Java thread and our C++ thread. So this is fixed uh, with GNI providing monitor lock, uh, which is like a mutex, it's the JV like one of the JVM mutexes, they have a couple. But yeah, you just do monitor enter, and then monitor exit. Just do that before accessing something, like a list, and that should uh, fix any crashes that you might be having. Now for JVMTI, I do not like JVMTI because it's not provided in every JVM, and when it's provided, only some of the functionalities are there. Most of the time, not everything is implemented. So I just try to avoid using it. But I do recommend everyone check it out. It has a lot of really powerful stuff like the redefine class, which uh, you can use to modify Java functions at runtime and a lot of other cool stuff. So yeah, that's uh, a thing that you can do. And this is how you get the GVMTI end. If you just, it's very similar to the GNI end stuff, just get end. Um, and yeah, now we finally get the Java function hooking. Now, I know that everyone's lazy, so there are a couple ways. I'll just show you the easiest way that you can do right now and just get it done with. Here we go. Hi, my name is Carla Shaw. You can stop at five or six stores or just one. I don't need friends. They disappoint me. <laughs> 